published 0241 EDT, the 14th of August 2017 updated 0243 EDT, the 14th of August 2017 A photo series has captured the unfailing love of motherhood from all corners of the globe. In a blog post by UNICEF Australia, the organisation shared poignant photographs of mothers and their children who have faced adversity. Whether they're walking their children to school or rescuing their newborn from the rubble of an earthquake, these mothers would do anything to keep their children safe, healthy and happy. The post reads, Martha Jerry holds her eight-month-old son Rahim at their home in Bailamoni village, Malai Malawi. Martha was born with HIV and although she was diagnosed during a time when survival rates were low, she has defied the odds. Martha is now a mother and her son Rahim is part of Malawi AIDS Free Generation. To make sure that she would not pass on the disease to her son, single mother Martha took daily treatment and tested Rahim six weeks after he was born. I was so excited, so happy he was not carrying the virus. He's growing healthy and strong. He is happy, friendly and feels comfortable with anybody, she said. Martha received assistance from a teen support group and now speaks out about her experience hoping to help other young mothers. I encourage other mothers I meet that even if they're HIV positive, it's not the end of the world, they can still live a long life. Avalon and her young son Caleb hold newborn baby Tina in Fiji in 2016 FIJI in 2016 Avalon Bush was expecting twins in two weeks when Cyclone Winston hit Fiji, which was one of the strongest tropical cyclones in the Southern Hemisphere on record. While the family of eight were preparing for the storm Avalon couldn't help but wonder what would happen if she went into labor during the cyclone. As the winds reached where they lived, Avalon's twins Gina and Tina were born happy and healthy early on Sunday morning. Luz Dari Landazari holds her daughter after giving a workshop on mine awareness in Areno, Colombia. Colombia Luz Dari Landazari and her baby were the victims of a land mine explosion in 2012. What I remember most is my baby's scream. I never heard a baby scream so loud, she said. It was frightening, even scarier than the explosion itself. Her little face was all covered with blood, she went on. Now Luz helps other Colombians avoid the explosions that have killed or injured 11,000 people since 1990. There are a lot of landmines here and no signs to point them out. I feel like I'm saving lives, she said. Bimala Dakune and her son Chris at a hospital in Charakat in Nepal, Nepal when an earthquake struck Nepal. Bimala was outside her house while the rest of her family were inside. Her husband and four-year-old daughter managed to flee the building before it collapsed but her youngest child, 18-month-old Chris, was trapped underneath the rubble. Bimala and her husband ran into the rubble to dig out Chris and when they found him he was unconscious and covered in dust. It was terrible. I can't remember anything but the dust and his blue face, Bimala said. Luckily, and to the relief of Bimala and her family, Chris eventually regained consciousness. He thought, oh my god, we are all alive. If another earthquake happens, we will be okay, because we are safe now. The world can fall apart, but we are together, Nanlan Ladubazain with her son answer in Mpumali Agna, South Africa, in 2013 SOUTH Africa Nanlan La found out that she was pregnant with her son answer and was HIV positive at the same time. Although she said she was frightened. With the information, through antiretroviral treatment and uninterrupted breastfeeding, her son Answer was born healthy and HIV free in 2013. A 15-year-old mother holds her baby who was born with microcephaly in Recife, Brazil. Brazil A 15-year-old mother from Recife in Brazil found out her son was born with a condition called microcephaly, which is when babies are born with a head smaller than normal size. This means he also has a underdeveloped brain that can lead to severe developmental disorders. Towards the end of my pregnancy, they told me my son had a problem in his head, a calcification, she said. Then, when he was born I learned he had microcephaly. Then they asked if I had Zika and I did not even know what that was. Now I will take care of him, which is what is important. I need to be very responsible. Sometimes I don't even sleep. I have stopped studying. I intended to get back but with all his treatments, it would be very complicated, very intense. Mitab carries her one-year-old son Khalil in her arms at the Demise refugee camp in 2014 IRAQ. Mother Mitab was nine months pregnant with baby Khalil when her and her family had to leave Syria. They were forced to leave the country because they couldn't survive the rapidly increasing cost of food and the fact that there were little to no jobs. Mitab went into labor after she walked the last two miles into Demi's refugee camp in Iraq, which was caused by the difficult work she was forced to do. When Khalil was one year old he was frail and underweight but was proving to get better. Katie Atu Karomo holds her son and his birth certificate in Bombali, Sierra Leone in 2013 SIERRA Leone 27-year-old mother Katie Atu Karomo had been fortunate enough to obtain a birth certificate for her son Amadou. 
In Sierra Leone, a country in West Africa, many births are not registered but thankfully her son is now a part of the country's legal system. This fundamental right is vital as it enables children to access health services and receive education while also protecting them from childhood marriage and trafficking. Naveen Barakat comforts her six-year-old daughter, Rosal, in the Gaza Strip state of Palestine a mother of four, Naveen, was left a widow when a blast hit a UN school in Gaza and killed her husband. The blast also injured three of her children, including six-year-old Rosal, and Naveen was left with a permanent disability. Rosal saw a lot of things, people injured with missing hands or legs, with wounded faces and eyes. She also saw her father killed, the mother said. This was shocking for her. It had serious psychological effects on her. Naveen's main focus is her children's mental and physical health and has them receive psychosocial support from a counselor working for a UNICEF partner. Mary M. Mahamame carries her baby son in a sling while walking to a health center in Gao, Mali. In 2014 Mal in 2014 one mother had to go through something that no mother should when her son was admitted to hospital due to severe acute malnutrition. Mariam's son Almatar was discharged from the general hospital in Gao, Mali, after eight days of treatment. While in hospital, Almatar received medication and high-protein powdered milk to boost his weight and provide essential nutrients. Amira Rasalind holds her daughter Jeanette outside an emergency shelter on the southern edge of Berlinger many refugees from Syria. Amira and her family made the weeks-long journey from Turkey to Germany, seeking asylum in 2015. The journey involved both land and sea and although they faced hardship and violence, Amira and her husband, Khaled, want to remain strong for their children. The scariest part was the water crossing. We managed to put all three kids to sleep before the boat left, and used our bodies as shields between them and the sea so they couldn't see the water. We had to master our emotions so we didnt transmit our fear to the kids, we're very determined all of us to go to school and master German. 20 years from now, I hope that people around the world will talk about our family and the challenges that we faced and the successes we achieved.